Heather Henschke's, you know, there are there are two scientists, Stephen and Prue Henschke, who are an ama- they're an amazing family, but uh, you know, who um, you know, look at scientific stuff and they they need to see the facts, they'll they'll do all sorts of experiments and all that kind of stuff. And Prue Henschke's, you know, was working for years and years and years um, on improving bind stock material, um, you know, out of uh, the Hill of Grace vineyard in Mount Edelston. She was working on tannin and color, as you know, color and tannin are all associated with each other. And she was working with a guy called um, Dr. Patrick Ireland, who used to be our lecturer at uh, Roseworthy, um, and another person called Ushi Linden, and, uh, you know, did some enormous stuff. And then they saw the impact of climate change. Now, these people, um, you know, they they started adopting things like biodynamic, um, you know, kind of organic to start off with, and then biodynamics in terms of their running their vineyards, because they were so worried that they would lose their vines because of, you know, they needed to drought proof the wine, uh, the vineyards, um, and to try and protect, you know, protect the vines as best as they can. And they really have been very innovative and have been- had, And they're had also a, a lovely example of this exchange between Australia and Europe, because they studied at Eisenheim, so they, they brought back they a lot of the ideas from um, one of the world's leading European, one of Europe's leading research centers and brought That's that right. back. So there's a lovely exchange going on there as well. Totally. But they're, they're, they're just, a, um, you know, kind of, a, they're extraordinary. They're an extraordinary family and 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 really well, you know, kind of prepared for the next generation because all those, their, their kids have, you know, are involved in the business and, uh, and uh, you know, they'll, they'll be able to take it on to the next generation very smoothly. But as I said to you, you know, there, no, there is no certainty that these vineyards are going to survive for another hundred years. And uh, they've certainly put an enormous amount of investment in, in the vineyards. Now, Hill of Grace is actually the most famous uh, vineyards um, th- that's under the Henschke label. Um, but um, but we chose to have the Mount Edelston in there for um, for good reason. I mean, it's one of my my favorite wines uh, too, I- in Australia, and I and I love it. And in fact, the actual quality is not much different to um, the Hill of Grace. Really, they're very very similar wines. It's just that there's less of the Hill of Grace because it's a smaller smaller vineyard and uh and and very very low yielding because of its very old vines so the barossa was in the 1840s was settled by both english and uh german settlers who call them german rather than silesian and um and the henschkes were some of the first the family were some of the first people to to come into the barossa and they first settled in the barossa floor um around bethany um but um, but they ended up um, um, acquiring land up in the Eden Valley around Cainton, and that's why the family are up there. The Mount Edelston vineyard, they acquired it in the 1950s, but it was planted in, the 19, in 1920 by um, Ronald Angus, whose grandfather, George Fife Angus, uh, was the founder of the Barossa Valley. And there's a town called Angerston that's named after um, that family. And uh, uh, it was already quite a well-known vineyard. And the vine stock materials believed to have come probably locally from Pusey Vale. Um, that was one of the very early, early vineyards. And, um, and so uh, when the Henschkes uh, acquired it, um, it was acquired with Cyril Henschke, not by Prue and Stephen. So they just, you know, they started their first bottling um in very in i think it was 19 a little bit earlier than hill of grace i think it was about 52 or 53 was the first first bottling of mount elston and but it you know none of these wines really grabbed you know huge traction really until the 1970s and 1980s when um prue and stephen came in and they completely renovated the vineyards and they you know, with the marketing and all the same thing, almost identical with what was happening in Bordeaux was happening with Mark Edelston. So it's had a most it's had a most extraordinary, um, you know, kind of evolution, price evolution, quality evolution, and and reputation uh, in uh, in Australia. And hope- this picture that we have here is quite yeah. an important 
because yeah. you're talking about them trying to ensure longevity and combating the, the impact of a changing climate yeah. and this so see, idea of crop cover is very important to them yeah you'll see that you'll see that that's there's you know a lot of mulching that goes in the vineyard and, and everything like that to to um you know to to maintain uh, moistures and stuff like that in the vineyard i mean it, and you can it, see how gorgeous those old vines are as well yeah they are they are beautiful and and really the Eden Valley is just the most uh magical um you know kind of place to be in 